Welcome back to the channel lads, this is going to be a quick uh, look at uh, Luke Graff's uh, brand new um, 32 scale uh, Hawk and Luke box, the Mark 1. I've got some nice box art to kick us off with, lovely interwar, British interwar aircraft. Uh, this box art is um, just a piece of card and then underneath that we get then the main box, it's like a nice and sturdy, uh, nothing's rattling around in that whatsoever. So we open this box and then here we go, this is what we've got. So there's not, right, first off, let's say, let's say it, there's not a lot um, in there. To me, you know, as you open it up, you're thinking, well, actually, there ain't a lot here. So what we'd better do is have a better look at this. So we'll start with the instructions, which are nicely printed, um, glossy print. Um, with CAD drawings, it looks really good. You get what you do, you get, you get three options in the kit. You get a Japanese one, which is which is really interesting. Look at that, look. So, uh, the, the Nimrod, it was a uh, British carrier based seaplane. Well, you can read all that, going on, you read all that yourself. Into war aircraft. The uh, Hawker did come out with a with many. Um, designs all based all looking very similar um, but but obviously Luke Graft have chosen to model the Nimrod looking very good and in the kit you we get 3d printed parts resin parts get some decals um, and some foil I haven't seen the foil in there yet and, and this color manual and some 3D and some PE bits as well. So here's the resin and it gives you good, um, there's no actual sprues of course. So this is this is all new to me. I'm gonna put this straight out there, it's all new. I've never done a um, modeled with 3D printed parts before. So this is what you get. So obviously you just find your parts. Um, this is your part cut call out, so to speak. Um, obviously the resin parts are what they are. So naturally, if we're straight into the cockpit, um, looks like the framing's all in one piece, 3D printed, of course. Um, complex um, cockpit, as you can see, looks very good. P part for the um, for the instruments. Can't get my words out today. And then straight in with getting the fuselage together. Um, so keeping our alignment of the of the exhaust stacks, they're obviously uh, handed. Uh, once the fuselage together, and then we're putting on some auxiliary parts. Um, the exhaust uh, pipe, so to speak. And then we've got the, the arrestor gear. Um, the instructions telling us to get the the spinner on now, but obviously or the prop. Obviously, you'd wait for that at, to the very end. Um, well, it's looking like these are all ancillary parts going on here. You got the radiator to go on. It's looking like um, undercarriage uh, looks relatively. Oh, I can't get in. Looks relatively. I'd say simple, but. Obviously, you're dealing with using super glues or CA glues, long setting. Um, so you've got a bit of fragility, I'd have imagine, with the actual joint itself. So you've got to be quite careful. Here's the um, the heater of the wings. You've got to get that absolutely um, correct if you want a correct looking aircraft. Low wing going on. Um, I would, if it were me, would have the tail plane on, would have the lower wing on, and then you'd get it all sprayed up. And there's the upper wing to go on. That thing comes in three sections. So we probably need to find out what this join looks like in real life. Um, whether you, you, it's like a noticeable seam, so you could probably almost um, paint all these together, uh, in, separately and put them together. Or will you do that all in one hit? We'll have to just check the the uh, what sort of um, alignment, um, what sort of joint we've got on the on the wings for the struts. 
rigging quite heavily rigged won't let that put you off at this scale it's not too bad actually and then basically um, there's a bit of scratch building you've got to do with some antennas um, but that's fine that's not really an issue uh, but other than that after that really is it it's quite an e i would say easy i'm not going to say easy it looks like a quite simple um put together i haven't seen this part here yet it's not there it's there but it's not there so i'll have to look at that that it's here and there but there's no i can't see a part for it so we'll look at that and then we get into ah uh, what you do get you get some nice color um photos of a of obviously of the nimrod there that looks nice doesn't it oh, lovely so the exhaust part look isn't a rust color it's like a like a like a faded burnt uh, metal color so be aware of that notice as well that the metal sections on the fuse are a different different color to the to the rest of the silver dope which we'd have to look into that as well get some references and then here are your um uh, your decal options so you've got 802 uh, naval air service or naval air squadron from glorious in 35 you've got this japanese one which has got no markings other than the fact that it's japanese but it's still interesting look at that one. then the main one is um 800 naval air squadron uh, glorious in 34 not lovely, not nice. So uh, with that uh, all done, we'll have some look at the parts. So if we start off with the the with the resin uh, fuse lodge, comes nicely wrapped. Um, <laughs> pre uh, dry fitted <laughs> by the lads themselves. But what you've got to look at is that detail on there. Isn't that lovely? You know, possibly you could say, I, I don't want to be as churlish to say it's over scale. I'm not saying that. But not lovely detail in there, not, not lush. So the scene that we're going to have to deal with would be something like that. So it's not that bad at all. Undecided would be an easy fix. Careful of losing the detail. Top sides, not too bad. Quite easy fix again because watch you don't lose the detail but look at that that's a beautiful piece there is some internal detail there look there is um fit fixing points for the for the fuse for the cockpit um framing and then you could pose the door open i suppose you could if you wanted to but then no, that's lovely that looks really good as i say this is my first look at anything of this sort of scale uh, in resin as a multimedia kit but that is beautiful uh, so i think this is the top wing now well you can see for yourself there's just like blemish on it there but that would that would be fine uh, nicely raised rivets lumps and bumps look quite nice they look really good so okay so i'm assuming you either nip this rod off here or we drill a hole and it goes into there and we cut that little section there that needs to come off probably to go in so you see what if that's you could possibly paint these separately and then assemble them in final assembly uh, we'll just have to look at see what look at that seam. Tidy all this up, see what that's like as a seam, and see what it looks like if it's that looks. Um, I'll check some references, and uh, we might be able to do it that way. There's a slight burring on it, but you know I, I, I'm in no position to uh, <laughs> um, to say it's a bad thing or not. Um, we probably need to clean the flaps out here or the aerolons. Um, clean that little section out there. But no, that looks really good. It's really nice. So I've got the bottom wings now. Right, so your, your struts just fit inside. They just fit inside these little uh, rectangles there. Okay. 
and then the rigging is this pre-molded you've got your molded in rigging points well, that's a good good thing uh, still nicely a bit of a texture there I mean you know yeah, like, yeah look, I've got the fuselage here so I've got that joint there so it just needs a bit of cleaning up I think and then we'll get a decent joint in there bit of cleaning so look at the end of this section see just tidy up and then goes in nicely Can we see what sort of size that's going to be um, 32 scale biplanes are a nice size indeed uh, yeah, I've seen the, the gladiator I did uh, back along Uh, what we've got here is the tail plane and horizontal stabilizers or stabilizers uh, <laughs> um, yeah well again that looks like it's going to be uh, where does it go that way goes into there this one's a little bit roughly um, I'll say this one's a little bit rougher than the than the other um, stuff we've seen that probably go into there goes into there nicely it does fit nicely and I haven't still haven't found the aerial post I'm gonna keep an eye out for that you could pose that that could be posed at an angle uh, landing light at the back there no navigation light um, I mean, it's still nice it's just it's still lovely as I say it's a little bit softer this one not quite as sharp as the the other the pieces that we've seen we've got a bit of texture on it there look um, it don't feel like it's rough it's a little bit rougher but well, we probably could do with a bit of a clean up so now we've got all the 3d printed parts now this is probably going to be the actual um, the meat of the kit to see what this is all going to look like um, there's quite a lot of it um, let's have a look let's just have a look at this part here this is the cockpit framing Framing to one side. Well, there you go. Uh, nicely detailed. Now they've got lines here now experts will tell me whether that's lines in the, the molding process you know where it layers up or whether that's supposed to be there i'd imagine it that is the lines i don't know whether you can see that where it's all layering up that probably just want cleaning up but that's okay that's not too much of a problem there you go that's the cockpit section there the cockpit framing put that to one side um, Let's have a look at the exhaust um, manifold. All nicely bagged up. That's the exhaust manifold. All right, it really is nice. Um, that's the actual pipe itself. And uh, these are the manifolds. They're quite nice indeed. Ah, <laughs> there you go. There, inside there, look. Whether you can see that beyond my finger is the antenna post with the rudder so they found it uh, look very looks very good doesn't it uh, let's have a look at the propeller the propeller is always um, on a ejection molded kit the props always a good indication on on the quality of the molding I find I feel oh I don't, I don't think that's supposed to be there uh, so the prop is uh, very nice there's a texture on it I don't know whether you can hear that. Uh, that'll have to be sanded off. Uh, there's a bit of mould in there. Look, that's a nice bit of detail. A bit of detail in the front of the spinner. So yeah, so now that would uh, that looks quite nice indeed. Uh, the pitch looks okay to me. So that looks really good. Uh, so then while we've got them out, let's have a look at the wheels. The wheels look quite nice. There's no uh, tire manufacturer, which is a bit of a shame, I suppose, but 
there's a f yeah, there's, well, <laughs> so obviously the only cleaning up we would have to be doing is on the bottom, where there are any, on the attachment points. Um, well, that would come quite nicely. That looks, oh, look at the other one locked together. Obviously they're both the same, but look quite nice, don't they? Uh, this is the radiator housing. That looks a nice piece. Got some riveting detail on that. So yeah, so that, it's all looking good. It all looks very good. Let's have a look at one more piece. What should it be? Let's have a look at the seat. So you get various, there's a radiator in there and there's various uh, bits and pieces, a rest of hook area in there. And then we've got the struts and the landing legs. So that's all 3D printed as well. So if we have a quick look at the chair and some cockpit parts. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's lovely. Yeah, very good. Um, nicely done. Look, uh, uh, you've got the uh, the yoke there. You've got the two guns. There's the instrument panel. Obviously, a 3D part as a, a PE part to go in there. What's this? Oil tank or something? Fire extinguisher. It's quite nice. Uh, there's no molding texture or I don't know what you'd call it on 3D printed parts. Layering, te layering texture on these, but it is all a bit. It's all a little bit rough, so you'd need to just tidy these. Just a quick whip of a sanding stick, um, and then you'd be good to go. Very good indeed. So here we have the um, PE parts. We get them out. Let's get them out. And you get a rod of brass, which is I think is what I've seen for the wings. Oh, what's this? You get, I think we get. Oh, here we go. Let's get this one. Let's get all this out. Let's leave that brass rod in there because we know what that looks like. I've seen a brass rod before. <laughs> get a lovely sticker. <laughs> Look at that. That's nice, isn't it? That sticker. That's a sticker. Here are your um, instruments. Now, they look like they're a sticker too. Ah, what's going on here then? So that's a sticker. Is there, are there a sticker as well? I wonder if that must be. That is a sticker on there. Vinyl. Maybe you cut them out then. Don't know. We'll have to have, I'll have to relook at that one. Uh, right, so that's that one. And then the PE is looking like that. That looks quite nice. Uh, it's quite thin. Oh, I see. Of course, idiot. So there's the instruments there, look, that's what the instruments would be. So that is just a sticker that goes on to the, um, the resin part. And then there's probably an X22, that goes on to there. Right, so you paint this up first. A grey colour, I believe. A bit of, maybe a bit of um, dry brushing and you're off and, off and running. And there are some seat belts here, got some, um, the air intake or is it the air or is it the oil filter oil cooler uh, gun sight odds and ends um peat up tube one of the better word get a little mask little mask section little little masking piece that you would take off obviously and then you'd have to fill in with a bit of masking tape that's quite nice that's that's solid some solid piece of plastic. I won't try and get them off. Finally, we get, we get a masking set and the decals. So let's have a look at the masking set. Got uh, this is for the band on the on the British version. Obviously, they've got coloured bands on the fuselage, and this is the mask for them. It's a good idea. And then the Japanese version, you get the uh, mask for the humori. I can't say the word. 
so um so that's quite nice as well and then the decals the decals 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 is that and that they are very nice uh don't say who they're printed by um imagine it's in-house um relatively thick i guess but i think it would be okay nice color carrier film there's a bit of carrier film around the around the letters here and the numbers uh, whether you want to take that out you could probably take out the inner bits couldn't you but those rounders look okay um, no that looks right that's nice and bright there's no stencil data on there whether you'd want to put it on whether it had any on at all who knows again that's all part of um, finding out about the kit isn't it see what's on the side there look they, they, they might be next uh, to sum up um, well it's the pr well let's 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 say how it is this is quite expensive it's the same price as a a good wing nut wings kit uh, or X wing nut wings kit um, but being in resin and not injection molded does that make a difference I think you could probably get a bit more um, you get a bit more bang for your buck possibly with this with this kit I don't know obviously it's not for beginners uh, you need to have some sort of um, decent experience in modeling um, certainly if you've got any experience in building resin kits that <laughs> that would help I haven't got any um, but that ain't gonna put me off gotta start somewhere so with some slow drying CA glue um, and some Tamiya LP11 I think you'd probably uh, do a decent job of this and it's such a beautiful air aircraft um, it's a subject it's a bit niche into war British aircraft it's not you know let's not beat around the bones let's say you know um, it's only going to be it's only going to appeal to a certain amount of people but what this is a fabulous um, item to the collection and like I say, it'll go beautifully with my two gladiators. And I've got a couple of wing nut, um, I've got a wing nut uh, snipe to do, which is which is be silver as well. So yeah, fabulous. Um, this is now available in 148. So I'm not one repping for Luke Graf. This is now available in 148 flavor. So that might be a little bit better uh, if you're, you know, if you for your um, um, display case. But um, very good. I can't recommend this highly enough. 